Yes. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Hong Kong Philatelic Society and Hong Kong Study Circle. Welcome to another monthly meeting uh, of our group. And uh, tonight's um, uh, uh, the, the theme of tonight's meeting is the, the Battle of Hong Kong and Japanese Occupation Part Two. Uh, there are still a lot of uh, areas um, we haven't discussed last time, so we decided to have another session. And of course, this meeting is uh, being sponsored by uh, FIAP, the Federation of Inter-Asian Philately, and, and we should thank very much for their, uh, their, their kindness. So um, now, uh, before we start the meeting, uh, I, I've got a, maybe a couple of things to announce. Uh, one, of course, is the... Uh, uh, the, 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 in fact, Hong Kong Philatelic Society and Hong Kong Study Circle uh, uh, subscription. <laughs> so, um, therefore, if you have actually sent your subscription to the, uh, uh, the treasurer, uh, you kindly do so as soon as possible uh, by, uh, I think, uh, by PayPal, I think, PayPal or send a check or whatever. And the other thing is, uh, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, uh, Professor Shaw. Uh, for winning a, a gold medal and the best periodic uh, uh, for for the uh, uh, for the New Zealand literature uh, uh, exhibition recently, so I mean a round of applause for the professor. I think he's well deserved. I don't know whether actually you have received the, the Journal Twenty Four, but he certainly is a very very well done uh, piece of work, and uh, we, we certainly are very proud of him. His hard work. And then, of course, all, all the contributors for for writing uh, brilliant articles uh, to make to make it the best periodical. Uh, so, thanks, Professor. You want to say a few things? Yes, I would first, of course, thank uh, Dr. Andrew Chung for the unfailing support. Ah, uh, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> and, and, uh, he's the gatekeeper. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. For the quality of the journal. Another is, of course, I would like to thank all the contributors. And I'm in fact uh, soliciting articles for the 2022 journal. So I look forward to your contributions. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, and uh, I also like to say that uh, Nick <coughs> actually, oh, Nick wanted to say a few words about our uh, uh, Hong Kong Study Circle uh, number 400. You mm -hmm. want some good articles as well for that? I was just I was just thinking maybe we should try and make it a bumper issue so as many con contrib contributions would be great very well received. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, you, you certainly get one from me. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, well on to uh, there's nothing nothing else coming up uh, on to tonight's uh, presentation and um, uh, who would like to go first? Richard, you want to go first? Oh, I think people are full. Uh, fed up with my voice. So let, let everyone else go first. Okay, all right. So uh, maybe maybe Professor might might want to leave early because of his uh, teaching assignments, uh, teaching tomorrow. Yeah. So would, would a Professor would like to uh, uh, do your presentation first? Okay, so uh, uh, yes, let me I'll, share the screen with you. Okay, I'll stop share mine. Uh, so, uh, do you see the screen? Uh, it's coming on. Yep. Okay. Do you see the screen? Yes. Okay, so this is the topic I would like to uh, share with you. Uh, is the Hong Kong forces mail right after uh, World War II. So uh, it's a very short period of time and I got a few covers on that. So to recap, the Japanese uh, in Hong Kong, in fact, uh, surrender on the 14th of August, 1945. And then uh, on the 30th of August, the uh, Far Eastern Fleet, uh, uh, led by Admiral Cecil uh, uh, Harcourt. Uh, we have a Harcourt role in Hong Kong uh, land. Uh, and then, uh, so after the landing, the airfield at the Kai Tak uh, 
was uh, then repaired and put into use. And uh, it was recorded that uh, during the first few months, an uh, email uh, travel from Calcutta, India, had the few uh, stamps, uh, FPO 354, 355, or RAF uh, Old Southeast Asia 5. Okay. And uh, for the uh, FPO 354, it will probably be used in Kai Tak. And uh, FPO 355 uh, was used at the RAF headquarters in Hong Kong. So this is the uh, uh, so called green envelope. Uh, uh, with the postmark of uh, 355. And uh, interestingly, this is in fact not green, but it's uh, white in color, uh, because uh, at that time the green paper uh, were run out, so they just used the white paper. So, and this is a so called honor envelope that uh, if the uh, letters inserted, it will not be undergone the sense. And then uh, after that, the, uh, the third, uh, the commando quickage uh, uh, was the, uh, disembarked uh, in Kowloon on the 12th of September, 1945. Okay. And then uh, the postmark use was uh, 366. Okay. And this is one of the, this is one of the, 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 the postmark. And uh, it was recorded that the post office operate at the 36th uh, Woody Road till uh, uh, 31st of December 1946. Okay. So this is uh, the first post office operated other than the RAF Kai Tak. Okay. And uh, according to Spring, only about 10 coffers uh, were recorded. So you, you've got some uh, rec uh, coffers on this uh, postmark, please let me know. And also, uh, you can see all these cancel without any uh, stamps. So the mail was in fact free of charge uh, till the 1st May, 1947. And uh, so this uh, postmark 366, in fact, was brought uh, by this uh, particular package uh, from uh, India or Malish or Malayan uh, before they uh, came to Hong Kong. Uh, this third commando breakage uh, was uh, involved in the battles of the Medibon Peninsula and also Tang Kao in Burma during the early, in January 1945. And then it was withdrawn to India and prepared for the recapture of the Malayan Peninsula. But of course, uh, then the Japanese uh, surrender. So, uh, the, this uh, battle was not uh, materialized. But probably they were in, uh, in Malaya at that time, 59, 15, before they came to Hong Kong. So you can see from this address that uh, uh, this is the address to this particular, this is the sender's address. Uh, he was in this uh, headquarter of this free commando bridge in the Southeast Asia Command. So this also show that uh, the postmark, uh, this uh, stamp was used in, uh, somewhere else before it was used in Hong Kong. And then uh, let's talk about the RAF post. Okay. So the first post arrangement by the uh, Royal Air Force RAF uh, were number five base postal unit at uh, Calcutta. And uh, the uh, first mail from Hong Kong reached Calcutta by uh, the air was on 25th of September, 1945, with these particular stamps. Uh, but this uh, uh, low cover has been record yet, uh, or maybe you have got this cover, also please let me know. But then, uh, uh, there was a, a number six base postal unit. Uh, uh, then arrived in Singapore on the 17th of September, 1945. And then a detachment was sent to Kai Tak. Okay. And uh, for this particular one, we used the 
RF06 Southeast Asia. Yeah. And uh, this number six base unit, uh, this is the uh, stems. Okay. And the early day long on the cover was 28th November, 1945. And the latest day long was 9 March, 1946. And uh, on the 1st of March, 1945, this detachment was renamed RF Post Hong Kong. So you can see that this is the postmark, uh, uh, RAF Post Hong Kong. And the early days of use uh, was 12th of March. Okay? And uh, after a few days, uh, when it's renamed, and the latest day was uh, 14 of June, 1947. And uh, also on the 12th, 17th October, 1945, uh, there was a new postmark RAF post 130. Okay, so you can see this one. Uh, this uh, was then closed on 31st of December, end of December, 1946. So this particular unit uh, was for the construction of an airstrip at uh, Ping San. Okay. So this is a particular unit. Okay. And then at the beginning of uh, 1947, uh, the uh, a civilian, uh, civilian post office would took over the handling of the force mail. Uh, so you can see this particular uh, day stamp. Uh, this is the 3rd of January. So it is very early. Uh, so uh, I suppose 1st of January was a holiday. So it's the third day that the civilian post office took over this handling of force mail. And uh, this was a Friday. Okay. And then, uh, uh, also, there, are, there were Indian Army units. Uh, they also arrived in Hong Kong shortly after the liberation. Okay? And uh, they used two uh, stamps, a uh, uh, few post office 222 at uh, the Land Force quarter, headquarters in Hong Kong, and also a few post office 127 at the camp in Kowloon. So you can see that this one is the uh, 222. Okay. This, the postmark was at the back of this uh, cover. Okay. So the, uh, the office uh, was at the Land Forces Headquarters, uh, Victoria uh, Barrack, at the uh, MOT area. Okay. And uh, so this, uh, in fact, arrived in Hong, Hong Kong shortly after liberation. So there is another one. Uh, this is also 222. And uh, this is a uh, uh, registration uh, receipt. And uh, uh, it seems to me that this is the only loan India registration receipt used in Hong Kong. So if you, have, if you are aware of other copies, uh, please let, let me know. Also. And then uh, this is the uh, uh, one two seven. This field post office was at uh, Jin Sa Chui, Kowloon. Uh, it was the first field for the British Indian uh, garrison, okay? and also arrived shortly after liberation. But interestingly, this uh, 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 stamp was then changed to this uh, form, okay? and uh, so this is so called. Uh, Intactual form. Uh, so uh, the uh, this postmark was only used from uh, uh, from 30th April 1946 to 4th January 1947. But why they changed this the style of the stamps? Okay, uh, would anyone uh, give me an idea on that? Uh, this seems to be quite interesting. Why they just change the styles? Maybe, uh, I don't know, go for use of this one or... Uh, Is it actually a back seal? 
the uh, the Itaglio one, the negative negative cancel. It's the left seven. seven. It's the number one two seven. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is this is the, the base stem. Okay. Yes. This is the rifle stem. Not the back steel. That, that's nothing on, on the coffin. No, I mean bag for, for, for wax, you know, for sealing of a bag, the uh, post bag. Uh, they use is, it because the the the, the, uh, the Hong Kong, you know, the, the Hong Kong branch office all have a, a little uh, uh, some negative uh integral back uh, brass seal uh, uh, with a crown and the name of the post office uh, uh, on it, which is which he obviously a letter. The, the, the bag. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if anyone get a, a, a stamp in the front also, also mm. please let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then uh, another interesting thing is that there are some uh, Danish nationals. Uh, they were also enlisted in the regiment, uh, both during and after World War II. So they are both entitled to the same concession post no way raised as the British force. Okay. So you, this is the uh, one to Denmark uh, the, uh, from those uh, Danish uh, nationals. Okay. And uh, also this, uh, uh, this was sent on the 13th uh, of February, 1947. So you can see that this is also civilian uh, post office uh, stamps, uh, also confirming that uh, the uh, 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 the post civilian post office to offer the handling of mail in 1947. Okay, then on uh, 1st May 1947, uh, then the, uh, the, the, even the false mail, you, know, you need to pay postage. So you need to pay uh, 10 cents rate. Okay. And uh, this is the one of the stamps. Okay. Uh, you need to pay the postage. And uh, and this is also the uh, even that those uh, from Denmark uh, that, that to Denmark that are from the Danish they also need to pay the postage. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, showing that the postage need to be paid. Uh, and uh, in fact, besides the Danish uh, soldier, there should be forces from other countries, but the. Uh, I don't have any couplers on those. So if anyone have those couplers, uh, please let me know. Okay. And uh, so I, this is what I would like to share with you. So it's a, a, uh, I have not covered all those, all, all those ship mails also. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is uh, what I have to, uh, for the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Um, do we have any questions? Um, uh, Professor, that was very, very nice. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Uh, I have also uh, studied these uh, types of markings and rates and covers. Yes. But as with many of my things, it's all over the place, and I haven't really put it all together. But yes. you have, you have uh, spurred me into uh, action. Oh, yes, so sure, yes. I will go through. <laughs> I will go through what I've got and, and yeah, share yeah. it. Share it with everybody. Yes, I yes, think I'm the, I think the. I think I have quite a lot of uh, oh. these kind of covers. Okay. Um, so hopefully I can add to your excellent presentation. Oh, oh yes, sure. I, 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 I look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. So I stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, stop already. I think, of course, the ten the ten cents one yeah. uh, rate changed. I think in nineteen forty eight. Yeah. Into uh, twenty cents. Mm. Yes, they, they changed to twenty cents. Yeah, yeah. I got all. Those couplers also, but uh, just for sake of time, I'm not. I'm not going to talk about those. Yeah, and also, and also, I, if I remember correctly, then uh, forces could send 
mail locally, mm -hmm. but in this case, they had no uh, rights or anything. They paid the same as everybody else. Yeah. Uh, Professor, you, you were asking for cover from uh, Canada. Yes. And uh, there is, um, uh, it has been several exhibits about that. And I don't know if you have this one. Uh, Canadian armies, uh, no, I don't have that one. Oh. And, and that would be a good book, book, yeah. It's a book, uh, Yeah. I don't know how, where I got it, but it's an <laughs> exhibit uh, prepared by Ken Edison, oh, March 2005. Oh, I see. Is it still uh, for sale somewhere? I have no idea, but oh. uh, probably no, if, you, if you search on uh, oh. <laughs> the okay. web, not for sale. Uh, you will find it. <laughs> They uh, is the bean apps printed and then they sell everything. It hasn't been available for sale for a long time. Oh, I see. Yeah, that would be interesting to take a look at this uh, particular book. Yeah. And, and of course, you've got a book on the Force C, yeah. uh, which I have somewhere also. Yeah. So it has been several publications about that thing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the. Uh, I would definitely uh, try to find this book. Okay, any more questions before we move on? Uh, Professor, I think you can get that book from the Central Library. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, thank you. I would uh, uh, search for that. Yeah, just check the catalog. Yeah, there should be some uh, covers uh, to or from Hong Kong. Yeah. Right, it, it has a lot of stuff in it. I, 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 I have seen this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there seems to be a lot of such uh, covers on the market recently. Because yeah. you are buying them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Um, if uh, the professor could uh, uh, stop sharing, so. Yes, I've stopped sharing already. No, you've got a button, say so stop sharing. Yeah. All ah, right, there you go. Yeah. yeah, good, thanks. Right, okay, so uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's a very nice presentation. And um, yes, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, the professor has got more material, which he hasn't really want, got time to show. Mm -hmm. uh, so on to our next uh, presenter. Um, Richard, will you want to, to go? You're muted. Okay, uh, let's share my screen. Let's see. So a little bit of an extension of what we did last time. I can find this. And then uh, several people asked me about last mails out and then very complicated, uh, complicated subject. But one of the more easy ones. Give me a second. Okay, can you see all that? Yes. 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 Okay, cool. Um, actually, pr uh, primarily because of the censorship, it's extremely difficult to find out anything uh, about surface males in late 1940 and all of 1941, uh, because there was nothing printed and you were subject to imprisonment if you gave information on the movement of ships. Um, so it is a, quite a bit of a detective story to find out anything. Uh, from the outset, let me just say that uh, a big thanks to John Tang I've used. As usual, I use quite a lot of his material from his great collection. So I'd like to say thank you very much to him 
And similar thanks to um, Sam and also to Inga this time. Thank you very much. So let's see what we can say. So surface mails out of Hong Kong in 1941, of course, the last ones were in no November and December 1941. And um, one of the easier ones, shall we say, to do is the ones to the USA and Canada, which I, ho I have hope hopefully put down correctly here. And other ones are rather more difficult to uh, follow, but I call this part one because I think there are probably about five or six different parts that need to be done. So let's move on. That's just a summarization of covers um, to the USA and Canada. Trans-Pacific mails sent by ship. Uh, then if we look at the mails to these two countries, then we can see that there were covers delivered and others that were detained. And if we look at the latest recorded dates for the delivered covers, then in to the United States, it's about, um, I have seen covered uh, with the 7 p.m. GPO uh, time slug on the 28th of November. And the earliest recorded detained cover to the United States is also on the 28th of November. Um, at that time, with sen the censors and everybody else, some covers of the same date didn't go and some did. To Canada, then there was a lot of uh, Seaforce mail. And out of those, primarily, the latest recorded delivered cover was at four o'clock on the 28th of November. And the earliest detained cover, i.e. detained over the period of the Japanese occupation, is dated the 1st of December. So essentially, you have to find uh, a ship that fits in with this uh, matrix. And there's only the only one that I've ever found, and I've searched high and low for these things, is the motor vessel Corneville. And this was a Norwegian uh, ship, one of uh, a number of ships run as the Claverness Line. And it operated Trans-Pacific between Manila, Hong Kong, uh, west coast of uh, United States and Vancouver, back and forth. It was mainly a cargo uh, line, but if if you you probably know that um, the mails pre-war surface mails to America were sent by the American President Line. And uh, the Japanese uh, NYK and OSK lines. But the Japanese mails stopped for obvious reasons in uh, early 1941. At the beginning of 1941, mails were sent to the UK via the USA uh, by these Japanese ships. Um, so there was a bit of an about turn over a short period of time. The American President Line ships, these are all President Coolidge, President Grant, and all these ones, were taken over. Um, half of them got taken over pretty early in 1941, and then others continued. But it's very, very difficult uh, to find their movements. But before, by the end of uh, November, certainly in uh, mid-November, there, there were no American President Line ships going from Hong Kong. 
and it's my understanding that mails were sent uh, on this particular ship. The, the routing based on its logs is uh, coming from Manila on the 26th of November and it arrived on the 28th and uh, sorry about interference from people going to hospital um, and it then departed Hong Kong on the 29th so that is consistent with the information I gave you just now and then its next port of call was Los Angeles where it arrived on the 31st of December and it departed there after unloading and so on on the 7th of January, the next day in San Francisco, and then another wait in San Francisco, eventually arriving in Vancouver on the 16th of January, 42. Uh, uh, this particular ship, after, it, after Hong Kong had been taken, it was redeployed and it was sunk in May, 1943, off the Gold Coast, West African coast, by U-boats, U-boats, sorry. So that's the details of the Cornerville. Um, I thought it might be interesting for you, but I just did it primarily for my own interest. I've often wondered why the last males uh, left for the United States uh, are on the 28th of November. Why, why were they kept? Um, and I'm not sure whether I have the answer, but it's a possibility. These, these um, ships from this Claverness line, as I told you earlier, they were principally cargo ships. They came from America and they came through uh, Manila uh, to Hong Kong. And then they sort of did a tour of uh, Singapore, uh, maybe uh, and other places. And then eventually came back from Manila, Hong Kong, as I explained just now. So they, they were not used for mail when the American president line was uh, fulfilling that function. But I think they were right at the end. And the last one to uh, complete its voyage, Trans-Pacific, was actually the Cornerville. But at the time the Cornerville left, the next ship in this particular line was already in Hong Kong. So perhaps this was called the uh, Pleasantville, very nice name. And this ship was, uh, had arrived on the 26th of November, just before the Cornerville left and was in dry dock just for routine repair and it then departed on the 4th of december well normally this this uh, boat i think would have gone to the same by the same route as the cornerville but for some reason i'm not i don't know it did not go in that route and instead it was uh, re reallocated, probably by the military, to um, Colombo in Ceylon, Sri Lanka. And it left uh, via Singapore to Colombo. So perhaps it was the intention of the Hong Kong Post Office to put the next mails for US and Canada on this, on this vessel. But it did not take any mail because it had been reallocated and therefore it all got left in Hong Kong. Just a theory. <laughs> so now came to a few examples. Uh, this particular cover was to Los Angeles and uh, 
and it um, sorry it was uh, posted at Kowloon Tong on the 26th of November and it was delivered in Los Angeles if we if we can accept the marking on the front that you can see there on the 9th of January and that that is and all all the ones I'm going to show you I think are consistent with the arrival of Corneville. I don't have any other explanation, as I said there, so if I'm wrong, I'm totally wrong. What's the one cent rate? Is it one cent stamp? I'm not sure I can't, for some reason. I think I it must be 30. Yeah, so 30 one cent is a little bit. Is it only part of the cover? Some part of the cover missing or something? Yeah, it's part. There's stamps on the reverse. Oh, I'm so sorry. stamps on the reverse. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a space. I decided just to put the fronts, just to give the dates. But it would have been it would have been thirty cents. Yeah. Then uh, also there are covers to San Francisco. Now these to the same addressee from different uh, companies in Hong Kong, uh, posted on the 28th, both posted on the 28th, and both were received the chop with the same misaligned 13 on the 13th of January. So 13th of January, it seems to me, that unless it spent a lot of time in the censor office, um, is consistent with the mail being offloaded from Corneville in San Francisco. So perhaps there was um, there were bags to Los Angeles and bags to San Francisco. Then there are mails. Uh, uh, covers, sorry, to other places in the US, principally East Coast. So here, there's two to New York, and uh, one to Chicago. So the one, the two to New York, one's dated the 21st of November and the 25th of November, and these would have gone on the Corneville. And they were delivered in New York on the 5th and 6th. Um, one is by company chop on the reverse, which is the left-hand cover. And then the registered cover in the bottom right actually has a New York uh, arrival stamp of uh, 6th of January, 1942. And the one to Chicago is the 19th of November, and that was delivered according to the stamp on the reverse on the 7th of January. Uh, Based on this, we can see that the, the mails to the East Coast were distributed from Los Angeles. Uh, Corneville departed from Los Angeles on the 7th and these covers were arriving or being delivered on or before that date. And turning to covers to Canada, here are uh, three examples, um, two from the 28th of November and one from the 21st, all of which I think would have gone on the Corneville. The top right hand one was uh, delivered on the 7th of January and the one bottom right on the 6th of January. Whereas the one on the left uh, seems to have been delivered on the 12th. Of January. The difference between them, of course, is the one on the left was uh, processed in the censor department, presumably in Vancouver. Um, but again, from these dates, you can see that the likelihood is that the mail was processed for Canada from Los Angeles and not San Francisco and did not remain on the Corneville on its journey through San Francisco to uh, Vancouver. Um, 
there are quite a few covers that went to uh, Canada on, in this mail. And here's two to the same address. Quite well known, I think Sam knows this address quite well. Um, Tsinghua Daily News. And one, they were both dated the 10th of November, but they were delivered on two totally different dates. The one on the top right was delivered consistent with the ones I just showed you on the 6th of January, whereas the one on the left was uh, delivered on the 4th of February. Again, the difference between the two is that the one on the left was processed by the censor department in Canada. And at that, at that time, there was, there was quite a hiatus around the mail that was coming in uh, to the, that's, uh, the Pacific coast of uh, America and Canada. And we know of instances where American mail was actually sent up to Canada where they were training uh, US operatives uh, as censors to go back down to San Francisco and so on. So there are no anomalies and this is just an example, I think, of that. Richard, how do you explain those uh, eight cent rates? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Because it should be five cents if it's uh, printed matter. Yeah. Or 30 cents if it's surface mail. Yes. Yes. Uh, can I come back to you on that one? I never really, sure. I didn't really uh, think about that, to be honest. Um, yes. It is a bit strange. I'm not. I don't have in front of me the back of the cover, so I'm not sure if there's stuff on the back, to be honest. Then, just as an aside, of course, at that time, the uh, uh, UK mail was sent from mid mid 1940s, something like that, mainly via the United States. And these are two envelopes, two covers, sorry, to England, to the same location in Derby, um, which could well have also gone on the Cornerville. I'm actually pretty sure they did. And they both arrived in the premises in Derby on the 9th of February, 1942. So probably these were carried in uh, transatlantic convoy number HX172. And this, this convoy arrived in Liverpool on the 7th of February consistent with the arrival date here. And it departed from Halifax in Nova Scotia, Canada, on 26th of January. There were, I think, I'll put it in two, three, seven or eight ships in this convoy were carrying mail. And the dates from this, suggest that these UK mails may uh, have been offloaded at Vancouver for some reason. Perhaps that was the quickest way or the, or the normal way of catching the Canadian Pacific Railroad, I think, um, across Canada to Halifax. And then I think uh, it arrived, the, the Conville arrived in Vancouver on the 23rd. So I think that would roughly fit with that. So actually, um, this is not so much a presentation as more a request for help. Um, 
I, I am continuing to study when I can all of uh, 1941 males. And it would be a huge help if you have any 1941 covers, the surface male covers that have uh, arrival or transit markings so that it can be seen when they left Hong Kong and when they arrived either at their a transit location or at their destination. Surface males would also include air mails at the dollar fifteen uh, MO rate, which were sent by sea to Singapore. And these at Singapore they then connected with BOAC services <laughs> to Durban and or Sydney. That would be, uh, that would be good. And also um, perhaps really um, more out of desperation, because I think there are very, very few incoming covers to Hong Kong. But if you do have one that came by sea with legible uh, dispatch date and the arrival information or date stamp, then that would be brilliant. If you could let me know, um, then it would really help me to uh, firm up on these studies. And of course, many uh, Richard, thanks. Richard, in, in a book I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, uh, there are some cover like uh, you described, and there is one, another one, sent on 28th of November 41 to Canada at 4 p.m. So you, you will find a lot of... Uh, yes, uh, I, I, of, uh, yeah, of thank you, Philippe. Yeah, I've, I, I, I have that. Uh, oh, you have it? Yeah, I have that information, yes. Oh, okay, very good, sorry. Okay, that's that's it. So, any help, most uh, appreciated. Thank you, Richard, uh, for your excellent presentation. Uh, are there any questions? Do you have any questions? Oh, yes. Uh, shall we go back to the eight cent rate that uh, Richard seems to be a bit puzzled? Sure. You know, you've got a couple of covers, one with a strip of two cents and one with an eight cent rate. So how could that be? Or just a, maybe just an error or, or what? I think so. Mm -hmm. Overpaid. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I think because eight cents was the rate to, to China, mm -hmm. um, maybe they just put the eight cent rate on for anything by, by accident, but... Yeah. Uh, it should have either been five. I have I have from that correspondence for the Xinguan Daily News a couple of five cents wrappers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the What's the Xinguan Daily News anyway? Have you Have you actually uh, done anything in uh, you know to done any research in, in Toronto? Where Where it is and where was it? No. Come in, Sam. <laughs> yeah. The. Well, when I arrived here in Toronto in 71, I mean, that's where the old Chinatown is and that's where they are located. And oh. they were, you know, of course, I haven't been buying any Chinese newspaper. I don't think they're, they're around, but uh, big correspondence and they kept their mail. So, yeah, yeah the, the eight cents cover belonged to me. The one with the the eight cent stamp and I bought it maybe 30 years ago. So, yeah. Yeah, there, there is a lot of correspondence for them. I thought they were still active today, but I, I might be wrong, Sam. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gone to Chinatown for, you know, <laughs> but, many but, years. but I mean, their newspaper is, is still Yeah, their around, newspaper, thought, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's part of the Chinese diaspora in, in Canada. <clears throat> specifically in Toronto area. Good. Yeah, the, the other thing is that Richard and I were actually studying the legitimacy of that hand stamp, the private one, to see if it's real, you know, if we could, <laughs> if we could, uh, you know, be sure that it wasn't put on afterwards, so. Okay, good. Any questions from anybody? Right. Okay. So thank you, Richard. And uh, if you were able to, if you are able to help, 
uh, do actually try to look for some 1941 service mail covers with markings on the back and uh, and then uh, give Richard uh, an email. Okay, fine. Thank you. So um, no more questions. We shall move on to the next presenter, uh, Simon, Simon Choi from Hong Kong. Simon, it's to, to you, over to you. Okay, uh, let me share the screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Um, uh, well, uh, this presentation uh, are having materials uh, from a few collections. John Tang, uh, myself, and BM Wong. And uh, special thanks to John uh, for allowing me to use uh, a lot of his uh, uh, great materials in his collection. And uh, this is uh, part one. And in fact, uh, I have a few parts and, and, and depending on how much time, uh, how fast I, I can go over the presentation. Yeah, and, and see how, how much I, I can complete that in, in, in several parts. Okay, the first one is a brief history of postage rates. And uh, during the three year and eight months period, uh, in fact, the postage rates can be divided into four periods. Uh, the first one being um, the first day of the opening of the post offices in Hong Kong GPO and Kowloon Central Post Office on 22nd of January 42 um, to uh, March 31st, uh, just uh, two months and a few days. And then the second period uh, is from 40, uh, April 1st, 42 to uh, March, uh, end of March 44. And then the third period was from April 1st, 44 to 45 April. And the last period was just a few months before the end of the occupation. And uh, just uh, uh, please look, uh, look that um, the Japanese use domestic and foreign countries or destinations uh, in, in, in their postage rate tables. And uh, domestic uh, means uh, uh, those uh, occupied areas like uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, uh, Japan, uh, China, Manchuria, and, and those uh, occupied areas in Southeast Asia. Uh, while foreign countries, uh, those are like uh, Thailand, uh, Annam, uh, which is today's uh, Vietnam, and then uh, Macau, uh, Switzerland, etc. Okay, um, the first one, uh, the opening uh, of the post offices and the issuing of, of the new uh, of the six uh, Japanese stamps on the uh, first day uh, the jet, um, uh, January uh, 17. Oh, sorry, uh, January the, the, the 22nd. And this is the, the first day cover with the six stamps uh, from General Post Office. And then uh, besides of the six uh, Japanese stamps, uh, uh, there was one uh, postage stationary card, uh, the two cent one uh, issued on, on, on the same day. And the right illustration uh, was uh, first day uh, uh, postcard uh, from Kowloon Central Post Office. And uh, during the first rate period, uh, four cent uh, uh, was needed to mail a less than uh, 20 gram or less uh, for, for uh, uh, domestic uh, destinations. And this one uh, is mailed from, uh, from Kowloon uh, to uh, Kowloon destination and uh, I fixed it with a four cent stamp. And uh, I'll please note that uh, the, the delivery date, uh, in fact, was on the 25th, uh, which is uh, three days after the posting date. And then uh, this one is another uh, 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 postcard, uh, the, the, the two cent postage stationary card uh, from Hong Kong uh, posted on the first day. Uh, for foreign destinations, um, these two covers uh, uh, were to Guangzhou one uh, of French. Uh, and uh, the, the, because it is regarded as a foreign destination, so the, the rate uh, in fact was 20 cents per 20 gram. And uh, yeah, the, the left one uh, posting day on the May 11th and, and the, the route of the mail 
I in fact was I was transiting high fall, uh, high fall of uh, uh, Anam or Vietnam, and uh, it took uh, almost a month to go from Hong Kong to 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 high fall and then to to Hong uh, Kong uh, The right one uh, was uh, posted on June uh, 12 and uh, arrived at uh, high fall. Uh, Oh, so sorry, the, the arrival is not high point. The arrival, in, in fact, is, is, is uh, control one, the, 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 fourth, uh, the fourth day. And uh, uh, it is, uh, in fact, the date uh, was uh, August 6th, uh, which is almost two months. Uh, another foreign destination, uh, in fact, was Macau. And uh, this one uh, uh, was uh, posted uh, from Hong Kong's general post office on. Uh, February 25th, and uh, with a Canton Transit uh, next day on the 26th, and then uh, with Macau arrival on 28th. Another example, uh, 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 which is a postcard, uh, the, the, the uh, pre-printed uh, Tencent postage stationary card, uh, Tencent uh, from Hong Kong posted to Macau. And uh, yeah, the, the rate uh, for letter is 10 cents, while the rate for postcard is 10 cents for uh, foreign destinations. And in fact, um, according to a uh, one newspaper clipping, the YQ Yet Ho, um, it mentioned that uh, the resumption of mails to Macau uh, was on January uh, 28th. Um, but uh, earliest mail, uh, earliest recorded mail to Macau, in fact, uh, uh, is January 22nd, uh, which is the first day of the opening of the office, uh, post office. And, uh, and, and yeah, and, and during the initial period, mails to Macau were dispatched to first to Canton before forwarding to Macau. And uh, this is one of the example uh, of uh, a mail post uh, to Macau on the first day of the opening of the office on January 22nd. So, um, uh, yeah, you can see that uh, that, 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 that is a Canton Transit, uh, January 28th. Uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, on, on the other side of the cover, and uh, and then the arrival date is uh, uh, 30th of January. So um, the uh, one of the ex explanation of, of this kind of confusing uh, information, uh, perhaps uh, uh, was that uh, during the first week, um, the the mails to to those destinations outside Hong Kong, in fact. Um, uh, was very unreliable. So uh, after uh, collecting the mails to to Canton or Macau, uh, uh, then the post office uh, found out that uh, they 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 were not able to dispatch the mails uh, uh, immediately. Then uh, they they maybe uh, they 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 stopped it, uh, that that service for a few days, and then uh, uh, and then they they secured some arrangements and and. and Resume the service and, and, and uh, release the, the news on uh, the newspaper, but I, I'm not sure about that. Okay, uh, resumption of mails to Canton. Uh, apparently, mails to Canton and Macau were collected uh, on, on 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 the uh, first day, January twenty second, and then they they were put in the same mail bags to Canton because um, both uh, all, all all those Macau and and, and Canton mails I and. Mean, in fact, uh, we we're having the same uh, machine cancellation uh, in, in, in Canton. So I suppose uh, they, they were uh, put in the same mail bag and then uh, uh, in Canton, uh, they, they opened the bag and then, then shot them uh, again. And uh, this cover, uh, in fact, uh, you can uh, look at uh, the, the CDS type uh, is a little bit strange and, and uh, not as strange, it's not commonly found. Uh, you, it's, uh, it's only the outer rim and the date uh, can, 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 can be seen. And um, with, with the, the name of Hong Kong and then the three stars uh, at the bottom side are highly visible. And uh, the date uh, uh, is January 24th and the Canton arrival date uh, 29. And again, the, 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 the rate uh, uh, was 4 cents for, for uh, domestic.
I, I feel not here. Uh, initial message to Macau were around Y Canton. Um, because uh, the Kowloon Canton Railway, in fact, was not fully resumed. Uh, I mean, from Kowloon, uh, from Kowloon to Canton, not resumed fully until April of 1942. Uh, because during the war, uh, bridges and tunnels were destroyed and, and required maintenance. Uh, the Hong Kong to Shenzhen section, in fact, uh, uh, were opened uh, uh, in uh, late March, and then uh, and then the service uh, from Canton to Canton was resumed in April, and uh, and uh, and uh, also uh, uh, between Shenzhen and Canton, uh, I mean the mainland sections, uh, uh, and, and from time to time were subject to attack by the guerrillas, and so um, the 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 initial traffic uh, between Hong Kong, Canton, and Macau, in fact, uh, uh, were uh, delivered uh, while the, the, uh, uh, the, the ships. Uh, and, and in fact, there were a three cornered shipping traffic between Hong Kong, Canton, and Macau. And the steamers to Canton were, were on a daily basis uh, by uh, three ships uh, the Kaiju Maru, the Lan Kai Maru, and the, the Unyo Maru. And then uh, the steamers between Canton and Macau uh, were on a daily basis departing uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, on each side. Uh, ships leaving Hong Kong from Macau, uh, in fact, uh, 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 were on every alternative date, and um, then that ship uh, uh, would return uh, on the next day. And uh, the initial mails to Shanghai were also routed by Canton, and uh, probably when those mails arrived to Canton, then it, uh, they, they would uh, go through the inland route. Uh, this is an example. Uh, of uh, uh, a letter posted from Hong Kong to Shanghai, and uh, it uh, uh, has the manuscript uh, uh, written per first steamer, Y Canton. And uh, the arrival day, uh, uh, in fact, uh, was April, and it took a uh, few weeks. I summarized a table of, uh, uh, from a few selected uh, mails uh, during the initial. Uh, uh, one or two weeks uh, for, for all relevant uh, mails to Canton and Macau. So you can see that uh, initially the, the, the lead time uh, uh, from Hong Kong to Canton is six days, five days, five days for the initial few, few, few days uh, after the opening of office. So uh, I, 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 I suspect that uh, because the, the, the surface or the, the route uh, uh, was, not, was unreliable, so uh, it, it took a long time, uh, quite a longer time and then uh, from 28 onwards, uh, the, the, the lead time has shortened to, to, to around three days. And uh, yeah, in, in fact, uh, even by the, the, the ships or the steamers, um, the, uh, uh, those, those ships are during the, the, the initial uh, uh, few weeks uh, in January, in fact, uh, were overloaded with uh, uh, all those repatriates. I mean, no, the, Japan, the Japanese uh, have uh, a, a policy of repatriating uh, the, the, the uh, people in Hong Kong back to mainland China. And uh, each of, the, of those steamers uh, were uh, are reported to, to carry uh, more than 1,000 uh, passengers on, 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 on the ship. And then you, 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 you can imagine uh, every passenger uh, uh, would have be carrying a lot of uh, luggage. Uh, uh, lot, uh, may, may not be a lot, but at least some luggage or uh, baggage with, with, with him or her. To, to go to go on board the, the, the ship. So uh, the post office might have difficulties and, and might uh, uh, take a long time to secure uh, some arrangements uh, for a steamer to, to carry the mails. And, uh, and, and also uh, the inland transport of mails from Canada to Shanghai uh, took a much longer time uh, because of, of, of the uh, uh, because of that route, uh, we need to go through uh, some occupied areas and then some unoccupied areas, and, and also uh, there, there are some corridors uh, along the route. And uh, after, uh, in, in around March or April, uh, in fact, uh, mails to to to, to uh, uh, Macau and Shanghai were through direct ships, uh, and uh, that uh, direct route uh, were having a shortened lead time. And then uh, censored mail to Macau. Uh, initial mails to Macau were subject to censorship. Uh, in, in fact, uh, not only Macau, but uh, also to some other destinations uh, to, to, to 
to uh, uh, China destination or some foreign destination. And this is an example uh, uh, of, of a, a cover post and column on 31st of January. And then uh, it was censored and sealed uh, with a label. And uh, it is having a candle transit mark, uh, but uh, the date is uh, uh, visible. And uh, besides of uh, foreign or Macau uh, mails, and in fact, uh, local mails uh, uh, were also uh, substituted to censorship. And uh, this one uh, was sent locally from the uh, Patrick Cathedral at Ain Road to Kowloon. Uh, interestingly, um, um, uh, uh, yeah, the, the uh, yeah, the, the, the person there uh, in fact, uh, belongs to to uh, Germany and, and, and also uh, the, the Italian, and then those countries uh, are in fact were a lot of enemies to the, to the Japan. And uh, the mail was posted on March twenty third, and then received by Calum the next day. And then uh, we uh, go to the second rate period, uh, 1st of April, 1942 uh, to 31st of March, 1944, uh, quite a long period, uh, uh, almost uh, two years. And in fact, uh, uh, exactly two years. And uh, this example, uh, uh, there's a cover of also the first day of the 1st of April, uh, 1942, from Hong Kong uh, to Canton. And uh, you can uh, see that uh, the, the Canton arrival was on the fifth, uh, which is uh, four days afterwards. Uh, another example uh, of the second rate period uh, is uh, covered to uh, the, the, the Chinese name. Uh, uh, is, uh, 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 this is uh, Annam of uh, Vietnam. And uh, oh, sorry, uh, I think I made a mistake here. This is not Anna, this is a uh, is Singapore, in fact. And uh, yeah, Singapore uh, was an occupied area, so a, a local a rate of five cents uh, uh, was used. And uh, postcard rates are unchanged uh, two cents, uh, two cents on official use postcard. And uh, this is an example uh, on uh, 1943, uh, March 25th. And uh, this is another postcard uh, with 10 cent rate to, to Macau uh, on the uh, 10 cent printed uh, postage system account. And hey, this, very, yeah. Simon, very interesting yes. card on the, on the left. Uh, uh -huh. The road actually is the Judge Hing Hong Road 26. Yes. And my grandfather lived on, lived in twenty five. Ah, uh, yeah. I so do so. you know that person? <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably one of these people who played with my father during the war. Yeah, and and yeah, Hing Hong Do in fact is quite near to the University of University. Hong Kong. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and also your 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 your, your school, your secondary school, the the same thing. Right. I mean, actually, twenty twenty six is, is actually is opposite, rather than next door. Oh, okay. Because they have the odd numbers and the even numbers on the other side. <laughs> so it should be directly opposite to us. I, in fact, this is an official, uh, a government official postcard. You can see uh, underneath the stamp that there's a Chinese word yong and, and probably uh, the, the, uh, there are two, two words. The first one should be gong, gong yong, which means it's, it's official. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. And then uh, the second. Uh, Rage period, uh, we can see uh, the, the registered mails. Uh, in fact, uh, th th there was no registered mails uh, during the first period because uh, registration service uh, was not resumed uh, during that period. And uh, the first registration service was resumed on 1st of December 1942 to Japan and local Hong Kong destinations only. And the uh, fee for registration was at 12 cents. And uh, uh, this cover was posted on the first day, and uh, it, it is obvious that we are having a cover with a uh, lot of stamps. And uh, but uh, and, but it, it, it was postally mailed, and you can see the register registration label and and and, and, and the uh, uh, deep blue uh, uh, rectangular hand stamp of with Xu Lao, which means registered. And uh, the the label in fact uh, is quite interesting. It is not uh, commonly found. You can see uh, a lot of uh, 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 registered uh, uh, 
registration uh, label from Hong Kong GPO uh, will uh, uh, be the uh, the hand stamp uh, of Hong Kong, uh, but this one is, is in uh, handwritten uh, manuscript. And then um, uh, this is, a, uh, okay, uh, registration service to South China was resumed at a later stage uh, on 25th of May, 1943. And uh, this cover was posted on the first day of, of, of the uh, resumption of registration service to, to South China. And, uh, and the destination uh, was uh, Canton. And uh, yeah, it, it, it received the Canton arrival marking uh, at the back. And you can see that um, besides of, of uh, the, the usual uh, Japanese stamps uh, and the, uh, the Japanese uh, post, postal authority allowed it the, the, the use of uh, other Japan or the, the, the stamps from Manchuria and then other Japanese stamps not released in Hong Kong. Mails to North China. And uh, from a newspaper clipping, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, mails to North China are both ordinary and registered uh, were resumed on 15th of August, 1943, according to, 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 to that uh, news. And, and also, um, um, you can see from, uh, from the bottom of, of this slide, I, I have uh, uh, um, uh, 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 some, I have uh, a sentence uh, I cut out from uh, the article written by Thomas Pock uh, 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 in the Learned the Philatelist, uh, 1991, and uh, Thomas Pock uh, mentioned that uh, there was no mail service between Hong Kong and North China until 15th of August, 1943, but registered mail service was available on the same day as mail service resumed. But the real fact uh, is that uh, ordinary mails to Tianjin, Peking, and Shandong uh, have been recorded uh, with days earlier than that 15th of August and uh, even as early as January 1942. Again, uh, the, the information uh, was very confused. And uh, I have an example here. Uh, this is a cover to Tianjin uh, with a date, 1942, January 23rd, 23rd uh, which is the second day after the opening of the office. And uh, it also uh, received the uh, Tianjin uh, arrival, uh, hands uh, arrival day stamp of uh, 7th of February, 1942. So I, I, I guess, um, in, in fact, uh, the, the ordinary uh, mails to North China has uh, resumed uh, quite early, but uh, only the, the registration service to uh, North China was uh, resumed on 15th of August. I think that, that was the actual fact. And uh, more examples, uh, this is another uh, uh, mail to, to North China by Peking, uh, post on uh, 3rd of October, 1942. Uh, with a, a picking arrival uh, at this time. And uh, another example uh, was a mail to Shandong uh, on uh, 28th of December, 1942. Uh, but this one uh, does not uh, have any uh, arrival mark. Uh, foreign destination. Um, this one uh, uh, was to Thailand. Uh, the exact month and date uh, uh, cannot be seen, uh, but uh, the, the, the year should be 1943. And the, the rate uh, was 20 cents, and, and then there uh, is no arrival mark. Or may, maybe the, the, the two in circle, but that, 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 there was no date mark uh, based on that. Uh, another foreign destination uh, having a 20 cent rate, uh, oh, wow, oh, I have so, so many <laughs> typing error to today. Uh, this is 1943 to, to Switzerland, not, not China. Uh, uh, Rich hundred cents uh, with a sensor label and, and, and no arrival mark. Xmas card to prisoner of war. And uh, this one uh, was posted uh, uh, on the first Christmas after the Japanese occupation uh, to Sun Tripo camp uh, with Xmas card uh, written uh, at, at the uh, lower uh, left corner. And uh, it was affixed with a two cent stamp only and uh, was uh, successfully uh, uh, mailed uh, or delivered because there was a, a 
and some mark uh, I, I think I think can take unit site and uh, yeah so I suppose uh, the post office uh, allowed it the, the use of two cent post card rate for, for this uh, mail but another one uh, similar date uh, this uh, 12 of uh, uh, 22nd uh, the same year also to central camp uh, but uh, it uh, had to affect a four cent stamp. Uh, but but you, you, you know that the normal uh, ordinary letter rate, I mean, that was five cent, not four cent. So I suppose uh, uh, that four cent uh, was a printed matter rate, but I'm not sure. And uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we can uh, see uh, some uh, government demand notes uh, uh, posted uh, from the various uh, government departments uh, to collect uh, 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 monies uh, from, from uh, the business uh, owners or some residents for, for, for various uh, utilities. And, and this one uh, was uh, fixed with uh, two cents. Uh, so apparently uh, two cents uh, was sufficient for posting this kind of uh, demand logs. Uh, in fact, these, these uh, demand logs are uh, in fact were, ref, uh, were, were on a very thin paper and free folded. And uh, yeah, the date uh, was March 13, 1943. However, uh, later that year, um, the uh, rate for these kind of government de demand logs uh, uh, were changed from two cents to four cents. And this is an in interesting example with initially a two cent uh, day stamp uh, on the 15th of June. And then uh, it had to add another two cent stamp and, 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 and day stamp with uh, uh, 17th of June, uh, two days later. And why it happened, I, I do not know the exact reason. Uh, I, I guess uh, because uh, previously uh, uh, they, 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 these kind of notes were, were treated as postcards, so two, two cents uh, was enough. But then uh, maybe the post office uh, or, or maybe the postal regulations uh, stated, uh, stipulated clearly that the, the, these kind of mail should be treated as printed matter, so they, they needed to, to, to pay a uh, four cent uh, printed matter rate. And uh, during the uh, period, uh, you, you can see some males uh, were having some black ink, uh, black ink, the, the, the stems or some words. And, 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 and most of them uh, uh, were males posted to an occupied China, uh, in, in Guangxi or Kuilin, uh, et cetera. And then upon uh, arrival, uh, the, the uh, uh, the, the post authority of the unoccupied China will, will blacken the Japanese stamps. Uh, but besides of, of that purpose, uh, I, I found uh, some some males uh, uh, perhaps uh, having some uh, inappropriate or sensitive words uh, 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 written on it. Uh, it was also blackened by the Hong Kong post authority, uh, like 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 the postcard uh, on the right. Okay, then uh, we go to the third uh, rate period uh, from uh, April 1st, 44 uh, to uh, April 15, 45. And uh, 7 cent uh, was the local or domestic rate. And this example is uh, available to a local uh, destination, so how, uh, in 1944, July. Uh, and then uh, another example uh, was uh, a letter to 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 uh, Canton, uh, first of September 1944, also having a seven cents rate. Uh, foreign destinations, uh, the the twenty cent rate uh, uh, was not changed, and uh, this is an example uh, from Hong Kong to Macau, uh, fixed with four uh, five cent stamps uh, with a total of twenty cents. And uh, the left one, uh, uh, this one is unknown. <laughs> And uh, yeah, uh, uh, which is uh, Willem of Wide and uh, Saigon, uh, which is uh, Saigon or, or, uh, or uh, yeah, or, or, or Ho Chi Minh City of Wide. 
and uh, it was affixed it with uh, a total of eight stamps, uh, a total uh, range of uh, 20 cents. Registered mails and uh, the registration rate uh, was increased uh, uh, from 12 cents to 20 cents. And uh, this example uh, uh, it, uh, was a quadruple rate uh, with 20 cents registration plus uh, 28 cents, which is four times seven cents to China with a total of 48 cents. And then uh, the right one uh, is the next example. Example registration mail, uh, but the, the destination uh, was Philippines Islands with 20 cents registration, registration plus 7 cents uh, postage. Postcard or printed matter, uh, uh, the rate uh, has uh, been increased uh, from 2 cents to 3 cents for domestic destinations. And uh, printed matter rate uh, uh, was increased from four cents to six cents. Um, then uh, on 16th of April 1945, uh, the, the, the uh, post office uh, issued a free mm -hmm. new stamp mm -hmm. uh, with overprint. And then also, uh, uh, postal station like postal station account also overprinted with uh, 1.5 yen. And uh, this is the uh, uh, fourth or uh, the last uh, uh, postage rate period. And um, the uh, registration rate uh, uh, was decreased from 20 cents to 5 yen, uh, which is $5, okay? And uh, the, the uh, postage rate uh, uh, was increased from 7 cents uh, to 3 yen, which is $3 for domestic destinations. Uh, this is... Uh, registered uh, cover posted on the first day, the 16th of April, 1945. Um, the one on, 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 on the right uh, is uh, another registered mail post from Kowloon. Uh, you can see that uh, the, the, the label of Kowloon, in fact, uh, was having the, the name of the post office Kowloon preprinted. Uh, in fact, um, this type of uh, label uh, uh, did not uh, happen to all other uh, post offices. And uh, yeah, the, the rate uh, was 5 yen, a registration was 3 yen to Japan. And uh, yeah, and this uh, one uh, is 3 yen domestic rate uh, to Taiwan. And uh, another one, uh, uh, 3 yen to China uh, from Vietnam. Uh, postcard rate uh, was increased uh, from 3 cents to uh, 1 yen uh, and 50 cents, uh, which is $1.5. Another example, uh, 1.5 yen uh, preprinted or uh, overprinted uh, postcard to a local destination. Late mails. Um, the Japanese surrendered on the 15th of August, uh, but was instructed to remain to remain at the post uh, until the British came. Uh, post offices, uh, at least GPO, Kowloon, and Wan Chai continued to open and postal operations that continued to run. Uh, this is an example uh, uh, posted uh, on the 20th of uh, August, uh, 1945, uh, having six yen uh, double rate for local destination. And uh, another example, uh, registered copper uh, also on the 20th of August uh, to Canton with a uh, Canton arrival on the uh, uh, 25th of August. Oh. Last postmark, and uh, as Hong Kong was handed over by Japanese to the British on 30th, and uh, all post offices were closed on 31st by order of the British military administration. And according to Thomas Cork uh, uh, in the London Philatelist 1991, uh, mails post overnight on 30th uh, and early morning of 31st were cleared before the order was received. And uh, nobody was aware that post office were to be closed. And uh, this is one of the uh, example of the last day cover uh, post on the 31st to a local uh, address and then uh, a few other uh, philatelic uh, postmarks 
from Kowloon and Wan Chai as well. Yeah, and this is the end of my uh, part one of the presentation. And uh, yeah, any questions? Congratulations, uh, really an excellent presentation of the uh, Japanese occupation rates uh, and the, the very nice array of covers that shown and uh, not, not easy to come by, you know, particularly to uh, various other destinations aside from uh, say China. So really, really, really yeah. very nice material there. Yeah, yeah, and in, in fact, a few remarks about the covers. In, in fact, uh, while uh, I was uh, assembling uh, this presentation, uh, of course, uh, I, 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 I know that uh, I, I have a lot of holes uh, in my collection. And, and then I, I seek help from John. And of course, John is having a very excellent collection. And he allowed me to use a lot of his material. And uh, but, but anyway, um, and in fact, uh, there, 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 there are some some uh, 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 race or destinations uh, which are quite uh, uh, quite rare. I will use, use mm, that word, like, like those foreign destinations or the uh, one one point five dollar uh, pre printed postage stationery card uh, 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 issued in nineteen forty five, uh, and and some uh, registered covers etc. Those, those are not easy to find. No, uh, I would say. Yeah. totally agree. Yes, yeah, Simon. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for this excellent presentation, very clear. And just one um, little remark. It seems that uh, for foreign destination, the post office must have been quite confused uh, mm -hmm. for some destination. Because uh, at a domestic rate, we are normally all the sphere of cooperation with Japan. Yeah. And uh, foreign destination were the other, like Macau. Now, concerning the Philippines, yeah. you are showing a cover at domestic rate. Yes. Absolutely. And what I have shown in my exhibition, which I did in London years ago, mm -hmm. was a postcard at a foreign destination rate, which is 10 cents. Mm -hmm. So apparently, they did not know really how to handle Philippines. Was that part of the cooperation sphere or was that a foreign destination? And apparently, they were using both rates. Um, oh. Okay, uh, let me see whether I have a record of your exhibit. Uh, yeah, I remember you have a cover to, to, to uh, the Philippines. And uh, so you, you remember you, yours is a 10 cent postcard? It was a postcard at 10 cent, which uh, normally was a foreign destination for postcard. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, um, let me see if I can show it. Hold on. And let me, see. Let, let okay. me try okay. to. I, I, I thought, I thought your, 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 your uh, cover in one of your exhibits, I'm not, well, my, I, I'm not sure, I don't know how, how many exhibits you, you are having, but uh, you, your cover, in, in fact, is a five cent, uh, it's having a five cent rate. But, but yeah, yeah, please show your, your, your record. Your, your no, no, the, the cover, it was a cover at five cents, that's right, but it was a postcard at 10 cents. Okay. Is, okay. I'm talking about the, uh, the postcard. Let, let me try to show my, to yeah, share yeah. my screen. Um, I don't know how to do that exactly. Um, let me see. How do we do that? Well, uh, I don't see anything to, to share. Go to share screen. Uh, you didn't tell me to, how to do it. There's a bar no. at the bottom or top. Move, move your cursor uh, stop down it, tell me the Stop video, choose virtual background, choose video filter pin, hide self, I don't see any sharing. Share Sorry. screen at the bottom of the screen. Yes, yeah, so share screen. There's an arrow. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, uh, wait. Wait. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So you see that a, a postcard, mm -hmm. which is 10 cents, which is foreign destination. Mm -hmm. And okay. it, it is addressed to, to Manila. Yes. Mm. Mm, interesting. 
So apparently they were they didn't know how to really uh, what how to classify Philippines. Hmm. Yeah, and and yeah, because uh, there there there, uh, there there was just very limited uh, covers to this uh, to this foreign destination. So yeah, uh, we we need to see more of them in order to determine. But uh, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, some examples uh, we, we, we have seen uh, uh, we're having five cent uh, rate for, for, for ordinary letters. Yeah. Now, uh, how do you stop, stop sharing? Stop sharing, yeah. Uh, that is. Okay. The lip, right. Because the, the, your POW card was sent from POW, could it be the fact that that's the only card this particular person has, so he or she grab anything that and use one that is the wrong rate. Uh, any, anything is possible. <laughs> Some, yeah, it's possible. Uh, hard to know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. May I ask a question? Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah, a very nice presentation. Uh, there, uh, for those of you who can read Chinese. Uh, there is a, uh, I mean, uh, amongst uh, the, the covers, there are, there are quite a few of them actually with the uh, 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 addressy being uh, Mr. Wong, Wong Man Look of, yes. of uh, uh, Canton or Guangzhou. Uh, who is he? Is he a stamp collector or? Um, uh, there's a huge correspondence. Must have been. From, from, from the address or, 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 or yeah, from, from the address in fact, uh, um, the, the, the sender uh, 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 called him, uh, as, as far as I remember, uh, some a postal clerk or the postmaster of, of the Canton Post Office or, or some kind of official at the oh. Canton Post Office. Okay. So those are actually uh, so commercial correspondence rather than uh, yeah and 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 the sender uh, 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 one one of the uh, usually seen uh, sender in fact was a C Y Lee a Lei Ching Yu and and I suppose uh, he, he was a, 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 a stamp stamp shop owner or, or, or uh, yeah he must must be a, a collector yes it's also also some of the uh, the, the Portuguese um, there's there there is a, yeah. a, a cover to. Uh, uh, a Gloria Barreto. Mm -hmm. That that's also uh, with the Dalmada family. Dalmada. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it's quite it's quite interesting that uh, you know all the Portuguese uh, uh, correspondence that left. Um, anyway, any anybody got any questions? And uh, you, perhaps you, you need to uh, uh, see it again uh, on YouTube. And uh, you want me to go to part two as well? Uh, how, how long is it going to be? Maybe 15 minutes or 10 minutes? Yeah, sure. Well, why not? Yeah. Okay. Okay, go on. Yeah, this one. Uh, part two, instructional markings. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, instructional markings are uh, used during the Japanese occupation. Yeah, and uh, uh, some of the markings uh, in fact uh, appeared on the detained covers like the one by Kitty uh, uh, together with the low service and tour. I, I guess the Lopez Lopez uh, might be used by the British Post Office, but one by Kid, I believe, uh, was used by the Japanese. And then uh, another one by Kid, together with another one called the Toyo Yingei, return to Toyo Yingei Go, return to originating office. And I find that Kid is shop closed. Okay, um, this one uh, is having a shop closed and then uh, a lot of uh, mm. marks uh, or, or handwritings uh, on, on, on the card, uh, like uh, on the left, uh, 
using the blue arrow pointing to Yakko Songwan, uh, which is the address of Gaolong Gong Dong Dou, uh, Canton Road of Kowloon. And uh, we can see, I see that the address uh, in fact was Canton Road of Kowloon. And then uh, two Chinese words are here, Chak Hoi, uh, demolished. Okay, uh, this one, uh, and in fact, quite a lot of instructional markings uh, uh, were on uh, the correspondence from the Wing On Bank. Or, yeah. And this one is having uh, unclaimed UK uh, mailing, uh, which means uh, the, the, the addressee uh, did not claim uh, the, the letter uh, uh, for a long time and uh, just overdue. Uh, this one, uh, uh, on the left, Qin Yi San Ji moved it, a new address unknown, and then uh, the right one uh, returned to originating office. Also from the Wing On Bank correspondence. Uh, yeah, and uh, the, the, uh, this uh, one is having, uh, uh, the left, on the left is a low such person, and then uh, the right one is uh, returned to originating office. And uh, this uh, card uh, from uh, Kowloon, uh, no, from, from, from uh, the standing camp uh, to an address to, to Kowloon. And uh, yeah, probably the address uh, was moved uh, to, 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 I don't know where, and, uh, but uh, yeah, and then uh, delivered. So the postman uh, tried to move the new address unknown and, uh, and then returned to originating office. And uh, again, the, the, the same two instructional marks of the, this appeared on an uh, incoming cover from China, from Shanghai. Um, yes, uh, this is another one uh, with uh, moved the new address unknown. And uh, yeah, and uh, then a few Chinese characters, Gao uh, Koi, I circled in Zula, Songlai. Um, this one is, is, is not commonly seen, uh, um, uh, address unknown, and, uh, yeah. and then uh, the, the handwritten characters means uh, check it and ask it, but no one knows. Uh, the, the address is in Taiko Trade Street, by Castle Street District, some uh, Central Uh Yeah, and this one is having no such person. And uh, the, the, the uh, uh, the, the written characters uh, means uh, low such shop and uh, low such low such person. Yeah, uh, this is the end of part two. Any questions? Yeah, thank you. Those uh, uh, markings, instructor markings, um, where were they were used at the GPO? Uh, uh, mostly uh, in Kowloon. Ah, but why Kowloon? Not, not, not the uh, I, I don't know, but you can see that uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, mails uh, uh, post to Kowloon uh, uh, were having a uh, uh, back stamp of Kowloon post office. And then uh, they, 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 they uh, were uh, so good that uh, they, 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 they used uh, instructional marks uh, clearly. And, uh, don't know because of because of, of, of uh, a much uh, larger uh, mail volume at GPO that they 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 do they do not uh, want, want to spare so much time in a kind of instructional mass or whatever reason but a uh, lot of uh, instructional markings I I I, I suppose uh, were applied at uh, the current central post office. Okay, it's interesting. It's all in uh, Chinese or in Chinese characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, except uh, I, I have recorded or uh, John has recorded a few covers having uh, the retour mm. uh, used by the Japanese uh, uh, postal uh, authority and uh, which I suppose uh, was the only instructional marking in English, mm. but only for a short period of time. Or maybe because the new 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 chart in Chinese uh, 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 was not ready, so they, they needed to use the, the, the uh, with Song Kong shop, uh, shop uh, the, the tour for a short period of time. Okay, good. Um, any questions?
Simon. Yes. I'm going to ask a really stupid question. Mm -hmm. Was there an AR rate? Um, you, you mean double register? Yep. Uh, not published, I suppose, no. Thank you. Right. Anybody? Okay. You, you want me to go to part three as well? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe uh, five minutes or 10 minutes. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Why not? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, part three, French post office and Dalus covers. Don't worry, it will be a short one. <laughs> because French post office, French postmarks are very difficult to obtain. I was going. I was going to suggest that uh, we will we will have another session just on the branch offices, but uh, no, I don't want to go into too deep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Just just a very simple office of uh, pet examples. Uh, this uh, the, the left one is uh, Yamati, um, uh, to to uh, uh Central Book Camp, and then uh, the right one uh was from Kowloon City, and uh, okay, and uh, then uh. From, from left to right, uh, Yunnan, uh, Shamshui Po. Uh, interesting, the Shamshui Po one, you can see a retour in red, uh, which, which was applied in 1945. Okay, uh, uh, when, when the British has uh, reoccupied Hong Kong. And then uh, the, the top right, Tai Po, uh, which is uh, philatelic, but I think it's genuine because uh, of the words are written on, 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 on the left pane of the postcard. You mentioned about Wong Jing Wai, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, this book's cut was from Typo, and then uh, the bottom one was uh, Stanley. And uh, I suppose the Stanley one uh, was also genuine be because uh, uh, this late Cheng Yu is the CY Lee who posted a lot of registered letters to, to that woman, not at Canton. And uh, in fact, uh, his uh, uh, branch office correspondence has similar postcards, having uh, 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 the, the 10 cent. Uh, a postal signature card with the seven cent and then four cent and ten cent, and uh, having a uh, 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 date stamp uh, of several branch offices on, on the same day, uh, 1st of April, uh, 1945. And this one's from Stanley. I have another one from, from Yunlong and uh, one or uh, two, two branch offices. Simon. Yes. The, the Shangshui Po one, that's yeah. interesting. Also has a postman beat marking. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. K twenty eight. Oh, K yeah. This is it's not clear enough yet. Uh, likely K twenty eight. Interesting. Okay. Uh, um, Simon, is yeah. it, uh, it it was a twelve uh, post office, as you know, uh, and I think that's a very very wide subject, and I would mm -hmm. respectively respectfully sub um, submit that we postpone this discussion to the next meeting, because there is a lot to say there about genuine and not genuine and the, the different type in each uh, branch and so on. It's a very big subject, which mm -hmm. cannot be treated in 10 minutes. <laughs> I agree. I have, I have nothing more to say. <laughs> no, I agree. I think, I think Philip has got a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, I, I, I think, and I think we should have with, a, yeah. another session um, yeah, sure. just to cover the branch office as well as the POW mail as well. Okay, uh, let me quickly go through yeah, this. Go on, go, go through yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can, we can continue more details next time. Okay, yeah. Colin Kong is registered cover, and then uh, one Chai and the registered cover, but which is a first day cover, the first day cover. And I have no example uh, from Sein Kun and Shen Wan, so I want it. <laughs> But uh, I do not uh, want a uh, fake or balloon scope. And uh, okay, a very controversial topic. Uh, I just pose some questions here. I do not want to go into analysis or discussion. Uh, first one, uh, did Dalus visit uh, all the branch offices by himself? If yes, by what means? On foot, by bus, or by train? If no, then who produced all those scopes for him and how? And uh, who, who, who was over those person or persons? Uh, their rank, position, uh, 
uh, harmonic purpose, uh, frequency and means of, of, of the meetings or exchange of, of uh, money and, and purpose. And second question, why are all the cancer regions so clearly tidy and clean? Uh, did he purchase all the stamps and prepare the covers before the visits? And uh, why didn't he post some covers to himself? And why were there no registered covers? How could he exempt from the strict adherence to postal regulations? And by all branches, how to obtain almost identical, identical quality, uh, except the days of post uh, office postmark from 1942 to 1945? Cancellation to order, uh, yeah, by paper. But how could all the involved the postal class be so cooperative? So, uh, do you believe in Dalus Covers is similar to do you believe in God? I'd say. It is, uh, yeah, we, we had the discussion years ago, Simon, as you remember. Yeah, I remember uh, many, many years ago. Throughout the article in the, in the yeah. journal. It's a very, very wide subject which cannot be treated in fact. Yeah, so I'm not going go further here and uh, yeah this is the end of my presentation and uh, yeah thank you very much and uh, yeah please let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> okay I think it, it looks like that we're going to have uh, another session uh, on the on this subject of Japanese occupation and uh, uh, and and its aftermath so um, I think as the time actually it's it's almost uh, 11 o'clock in Hong Kong and um, I'm sure that some of us would like to uh, take a rest. Uh, I, I noticed that um, um, the, the, the president of uh, FIAP, uh, Dr. Prokop, is with us. So um, would Dr. Prokop like to say a few words? Good evening, everyone. Uh, it was a great pleasure uh, listening and uh, learning something new uh, from you guys. And thank you, uh, Dr. Andrew and uh, those attending. It's been very interesting. By the way, when we talk about the uh, Ladus, the, the last one, yeah, how many covers are available? <laughs> the one that you are suspecting? Hundreds. <laughs> 25,000. <000. 20, laughs> 25,000? Yes. yes. They all look very similar, all in the same and have, envelope. And I have had in my hand about 5,000. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. Yes, so that's a lot to think about. And uh, out of these twenty-five thousand, uh, address two different uh, persons. No, to him. Same address sixty-four Madonna Road, Hong Kong. All to the same address. Uh -huh. And I, I, I know that oh, Philip okay. has uh, has uh, cracked the Dalus cook, and maybe he can share about. Uh, that uh, secret. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> very, very interesting story that uh, we have. Anyway, um, Dr. Bakov, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for FIAP for sponsoring uh, these very interesting, uh, our very interesting meetings. And, uh, and also um, to, to Jasmine for uh, you know, her work uh, arranging uh, uh, to send out the, uh, uh, the link and the passwords. Uh, I think, um, well, we all have a very nice uh, morning or afternoon or evening, and uh, we will see you next month and uh, still on the same subject. Uh, oh, it's goodbye for me, and uh, you know, have, a, have, a nice, have a nice day and evening. Okay, goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. And you, you bye, -bye. Okay. bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.